Shalom Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We got troubling things coming all out of Europe. Doesn't seem like anything is calming down over here. You want to talk about a mess. We are definitely seeing a mess. RT is reporting that Theresa May must, must withdraw desperate Trump state visit invitation, says the MPs. Uh, there is uh, the parliament members uh, in the UK are in an uproar like never before. As you can see by the picture on your screen here, the protests out in front of the Big Ben's uh, clock there is just massive amount of people there in the park outside of there. And that park can hold a lot of people, just wall to wall people. It says MPs of all parties called for dis disgusting, as a quote unquote, disgusting US President Donald Trump to be barred from making a UK state visit later this year following Prime Minister Theresa May's desperate invitation. The MPs spoke out on Monday during a parliament debate, which was triggered by a 1.85 million strong petition calling for Trump state visit to be blocked as it would be an embarrassment to the queen, according to what they're stating there. This is a major, major movement here. A counter petition signed by 300,000 was also debated, branding the president's disgusting and immoral MPs urged May to withdraw her invitation, which was deemed an act of desperation as it can, as it, came just seven days after his inauguration. So a lot, a lot of people not happy with President Trump coming uh, to England. I really personally do, cannot imagine uh, that Theresa May would actually put a stop to this, but we'll just have to see whether or not she tries to cancel it or, or whether or not she, you know, they allow it to come out. Uh, I know that uh, there is a huge, huge Islamic population inside of Great Britain, and it definitely would be a, a major challenge to the security of the British government for him to make this visit here, not to mention with this many signatures, 1.8 million calling for him not to come, and just a very small minority of 300,000 uh, petitioning for him to come. So it would no doubt be a momentous task for the government there. Uh, moving on also, going back to the Russian, uh, for, excuse me, the Russian uh, ambassador of the United Nations. Of course, we know that he, he just passed away. I wanted to share with you a, a few of the comments that he made here just before he passed away. Uh, it says here on RT, uh, Haley's demand for Russia to surrender the sovereignty of Crimea back to Ukraine. Churkin referred his American colleague to the pre preamble to the U.S. Constitution, thus reminding the U.S. ambassador that Crimea's voted to become part of Russia and secure freedom and avoid Kiev's tyranny. In this regard, one cannot forget the remarkable historical words that are found in the Constitution of the United States, he stated. Uh, we the people, Cherkin said in his response, the people of Crimea quite clearly express their will in a referendum. Cherkin shifted, the, excuse me, then shifted focus on a fire a salvo, the direction of the British envoy, advising him that in order to gain some credibility, the UK should first return Malvinas Islands, which are claimed by Argentina, Gibraltar, claimed by the Spanish, and annexed part of Cyprus, which you turned into a huge military base. So. It's kind of interesting to see how Churkin was going along here. It was definitely a uh, pot can't call kettle black because clearly the British and other countries, especially Britain in this case here, the UK, has uh, clearly annexed a lot of places just like that of Crimea and they have never given them back, including dealing with the Spanish, the Argentinians, and uh, of course Cyprus where they have a huge military base so the US has a military base there as well and I think even Russia if I'm not mistaken has a military base there on Cyprus. I thought that was kind of interesting especially him referring to the Constitution of the United States saying we the people. By the way many people may not have known but Cherkin also had a doctorate degree in history so he does know the historical facts quite well. Rioters set cars on fire, loot shops in Stockholm suburb. This is kind of interesting because this has not, uh, by the way, has not uh, gained any of the uh, attention of um, uh, Western media that much. What's going on in Sweden is all the uh, rioting that has taken place there and the burning is getting just like it is in Paris. We are seeing major unrest taking place in all different parts of Europe. It's happening in Germany, now Sweden. It's already been happening in Paris, as we mentioned uh, earlier this morning. 20 different provinces of, of, of France has already seen the unrest spreading more and more rapidly across the country there. 
Uh, also wanted to share with you this one right here. This we're, of course, jumping over to Ukraine. And uh, even though there is a ceasefire in effect, uh, it certainly seems to have not slowed down Kiev. And uh, of course, the separatists fighting against Kiev and as you can see, the red flares going across the top, these are bombs, they're not just red flares. And as you can hear, the sounds of war are still alive and well inside Ukraine. Uh, no slowdown whatsoever of fighting, and just wanted to share that with you. It continues uh, to broil out of control uh, in eastern Ukraine there. Just wondering how that will end up shaping up with all this constant fighting going on back and forth. Here's another one here I wanted to bring to your attention as well. This was very disturbing here. This is from Paris. Uh, as you can see here on your screen, right up in here, you can see the police cars right here. I think there's three police cars that pull up, but then watch the mob. I mean, a mob that comes out against these police officers here. Um, just one second here, having a little technical difficulty there. Let me see if I can pull that back up again. Uh, this is on Mikel's, uh, on his page there. It looks like, wow, I hope they haven't, looks like they may have removed that video. Let's see if we can pull it back up here. We'll try it one more time here. See if we can actually get it to go. Yes, here we go here. And then you see a huge crowd of mobsters running across the ground here everywhere. The police car quickly gets out, out, they get out of there as quickly as they can as this big huge group of protesters come after the police cars. Not safe at all for the police, even in Paris, France. I cannot help but wonder uh, how much longer will it be before Paris ends up declaring martial law themselves. Um, it's clearly, clearly in Paris, France getting out of control. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, by the way, too, those of you that are watching Israeli News Live that do support the work that we'll be doing in Israel, March the 28th, don't forget that meeting there. And check out our latest message we just released on Danoon Institute. I think you'll find that very uh, enlightening, uh, very interesting message there. We will not be sharing it here on Israeli News Live. So I'll put a link below for you. It'll just be, uh, we'll, we'll title on there, Danoon Institute, to where you can go to our channel there if you'd like to watch that message there. Anyway, if you'd like to support the work we're doing in Israel March the 28th, you can go onto our website, uh, israelinewslive.org. There's a place you can donate there as well. And uh, by the way, too, that meeting, we will also have Rabbi Yehuda Glick will be speaking at that meeting. My wife will be speaking at that meeting as well, uh, trying to help the Israeli people recognize the evils that have happened, that have been happening to this country for years and the plans of a fake millennial reign. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live.